Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Steve Kinney. I'm a producer and engineer. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how Easy Drummer can be used to supplement your drum tracks, to make your drum tracks have way more life, way more character, make them sound huge, bigger, with more energy and excitement. Now, if your drum track right now in your project is already built using Easy Drummer, that's totally cool, no worries there. This approach that I'm gonna be talking about works whether you're using samples or live drums. Now, timestamps are available for your convenience in this video, so feel free to move around. All I ask is that you hit the like button, leave a comment below, tell me about your drum sounds that you're getting right now, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. All right, so let's jump right into it. So first, some quick background. It's absolutely no secret that Mutt Lang and other producers love to get really creative when they build their drum sounds. They approach the drums like it's just another layer in their entire sonic palette. And rather than use a set it and forget it approach, what they do is blend sounds together to build one complete massive drum sound. So you may have an entirely different sound in the verse and then it builds to this massive huge section in the chorus. And that's obviously pretty common when it comes to like tracking guitars or background vocals, but a lot of people forget to do this with their drum sounds as well. Now I can't play any of these examples due to copyright, but just off the top of my head, I can think of a few examples for you to listen to in your own time to really show you what I'm talking about. The first track would be Wolves Without Teeth by Of Monsters and Men. Specifically, the drum builds through the whole song really slowly and organically. Another example that I can think of, while I don't necessarily think it's the best song, I think it is a really, really prime example. It's the song Whatever She's Got by David Nail. Listen to the verse and how the drums sound there versus the chorus. They're literally just two completely different sounds. And while you're listening to that, pay attention to how you feel while you're listening to that. And you're gonna get two completely different feelings as well. Next, listen to the song That's What You Get by Paramore. Listen to the bridge section versus the rest of the song. During the rest of the song, the drums are, um, a lot tighter feeling, they don't have uh, as much room sound, and then it gets huge in the bridge section, so. And then of course the man himself, Mutt Lang, all of his drum sounds are awesome. If you check out his work with Def Leppard, you'll find that there's a lot of samples and extra layers of sound that go into making his snare sound sound so huge and larger than life. It's not just a particular way of EQing and compression, it's, it's multiple sounds that go into making that snare sound that way. From time to time, you'll come across engineers that say this, but it's so true and, and really take it to heart. Use your entire studio as an instrument. So now that we kind of know the point of why we'd want to even supplement our sounds and some examples on what that sounds like in a real production, let's look at how you'd actually go about achieving this and how to approach this technique. But first, if you're new to the Apollo platform, check out my console classics and heritage classics packs. They're available now. It's the quickest way to get production ready sounds as well as learn how to get really creative with your signal processing with your Apollo and how to get the most from that. It's also a really great way to support the channel and learn traditional signal flows in studios everywhere. Okay, so back to the video. Okay, so the first step in all of this is thinking about the arrangement on your song. What kind of feeling are you going for when you're building out your song? Do I wanna have a really massive sound? Do I wanna have a closer, more intimate sound? Maybe I want that sound to change. Maybe I want it to be really tight and focused during the verses, but much bigger in those choruses. So if I have my instruments changing dynamically throughout the song where it's getting bigger in the choruses but my drums don't get bigger, that's going to make that fall a little flat and, and that effect is uh, not going to translate as well if you're not having your drums change too. Okay, so here's a quick example of a work in progress production that I'm working on uh, with Katrina Burgoyne. I'm first going to play this example. Uh, from the intro through the verse to the chorus without the addition of the other drum layers. And then we're gonna go back and listen to it with those drum layers. And I'm gonna break down what I did. So first let's, uh, let's play through some of this song.
So now that you know what your general arrangement of the song is going to be, and you've got your general drum performance kind of laid out for that whole section, now you can see where you're gonna start to complement those sections now that you've laid out everything in your song. And then of course that starts to get pretty creative. So then you can go through all of the different samples that your DAW has available to you and start to see which ones are complementing your kick, uh, which ones are complementing your snare drum. Cool, so we heard how the chorus got a bit wider, it got a bit bigger um, musically. Now let's add in the extra samples that are supplementing that main drum track. <laughs> Cool, so let's listen to these drums just on their own and we'll kind of get a sense of what's going on here. So I really wanted that big room sound, but I also wanted the closeness of the uh, snares on the bottom side of the drums. So we'll listen to just that. Then in the verse, I still wanted the snap of a close hit. Um, and that's what this other sample is doing. So the big snare kind of disappears. Uh, and then in the verse, you still got the snap from the close snare hit, but the snares and the drums kind of seem to move backwards uh, in the mix, which is kind of cool. And then in the chorus, they come back with that really big room sound. In the verse. really complements the song nicely. Uh, love using this approach. It also makes mixing a little bit easier as well as you can kind of set your levels in a general area and just kind of move on from there as the heavy lifting is being done by the sounds that are uh, supplementing. Without these extra samples, this song definitely wouldn't have that same feel. So there you have it. And a pro tip is that one of the reasons that I love using Easy Drummer in my productions is that once I have my overall session mapped out and MIDI mapped out, all I have to do if I want to supplement a section is copy and paste that area of the MIDI into the new instrument track. If the session was tracked live, I'd have to have uh, some sort of MIDI trigger or I'd have to manually go in and paint and align MIDI data specifically to that track and that sometimes can be a bit of a nightmare. Then of course the coolest part in all of this is that you can change your drum sounds out on the fly. So if you add a new synth layer and you really love how it sounds, in relation to all of the other instruments, but just not so much the drums, swap a sample out and then your whole song now has changed too. So really helpful and that's gonna make your productions become a lot more consistent. It's also gonna make your life a lot easier during mix down. Okay, so now you should have a better understanding of how to build the backbone of your song and the benefit of layering your drum sounds. If you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, please hit the like button, leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about the video and subscribe to my channel for more. If you'd like to work with me directly, you can reach out to me on Instagram at the Steve Kinney and be sure to check out the console classics and heritage classics sessions packs. It's available now on my website and again, it's the quickest way to support the channel which helps me make content for you guys watching right now. Thanks so much for watching the video guys. We'll see you in the next one.